Hello, hello, how is everybody? I hope you are doing well. This is Strato Ayani from craftiuspro.com and today I am back with a brand new tutorial regarding Lightroom and I'm going to show you how you can quickly improve your photos and especially the colors in your photos within Lightroom and how to implement these changes into many other photos from the same session in order to save you time. But without any further ado, let's go and uh, dive into Lightroom in order to show you step by step how to improve your colors. I'm sorry, how to improve the colors within your photos. And yes, you have to put up with my Greek weird English accent. Don't laugh, I can see you back there. Now, I have a, a portrait as you can see here in Lightroom, which switches the situation because here in Greece it's autumn. And I'm going to show you how to correct the colors in this photo. Please. Um, take notes and if uh, you are considering, if you think that this technique will work only portraits or in landscape, uh, rest assured that this technique will work in every situation and in every single photo. And you can combine all the elements and the tools and the techniques that I'm going to show you all together if you want in your photos, or you can leave out any step you feel like you don't need, for example, the vignetting part or uh, the uh, black uh, slider part that I'm going to show you. So try to combine these techniques in different ways that suit your kind of photography and uh, that suit your kind of photography and your subjects. Okay, let's go into Lightroom. Enough rambling for one day. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open the camera calibration panel and uh, I'm going to do a, a weird move. I'm going to drag the saturation slider all the way to the right and as you can see it will slightly improve the colors in this photo. In some other photos it does miracles. I don't know why, don't ask me, I just know that if you go to the calibration panel you scroll all the way down and you select the saturation from the blue primary and you crank it up to 100 you get a better photo. Don't ask me why. Step number two, I'm going to basic panel and I'm going to fix the contrast, but I don't want to fix the contrast with the contrast slider, that's a no-no for me. I'm going to do um, some steps that will allow me to have better results and a lot more flexibility. If the colors are muted like this in this photo, all you have to do is you go to the black slider and you drag it to the right until your photo looks better. And that was it. If you throw black into the faded out colors, you will get a lot more contrast, a lot more punch and better overall saturation within the photo, as you can see over here. The next complementary step I'm going to take is I'm going to crank up the vibrance just a little bit. So everything looks a lot better right now. And if you don't remember, this is the original photo and this is the photo that we have right now. Step. Uh, number one, two, let's go step number four. I'm going to the hue saturation slider and I'm going to select the luminance in order to bring down a little bit the yellows and the oranges. So I'm going to luminance, I'm dragging the yellows down just a tiny bit and the orange as well. This will make the orange and the yellow colors darker and it will create a better contrast between the uh, background and my subject. This is why I'm doing this. Next step, I'm going to the effects panel and I'm going to use a post crop vignetting. How I'm going to do that? Very easily. I'm going to the amount slider and the first thing I usually do is I crank it all the way to 100 so I can see the shape of the vignette and the area that's going to be affected. Next step, I'm going to the midpoint slider and I will drag it all the way over here in order to home in into my subject and lock the viewer's attention to my subject through the vignetting. It's horrible, I know we will fix it, stay with me. Next step is I'm going to play with roundness to give the proper shape to my vignetting. I think this looks okay. And the final step is to go to the feather slider and drag it all the way to 100. This will ensure that the edges of the vignette will blend nicely with the main theme of the photo. And now I'm going to bring back the amount in order to create the final vignetting effect. And I believe this looks quite nice. Final touches. I'm going to the tone curve panel over here. I'm going to click this button, which will allow me to manipulate the tone curve 
the way exactly I want to be manipulated I'm going to click here to create a new control point and here again to create another control point and I will drag this downwards and I will drag this upwards this will create a better contrast in my photo and it will give a lot more punch and once you have done all these corrections you should go to the basic panel again and make sure that you have your color balance right now as you can see the skin tones over here if you have a calibrated monitor will look okay but the skin tones on the legs are going to be a lot more yellow because the light reflects on the surface of the leaves and it bounces up into her legs and this is why her legs are a little off in terms of color but this is a completely another subject with uh, Photoshop selections within photos and uh, targeting some areas to create some uh, better color for example in the legs or in areas that need color collection I will try though to make a quick adjustment I don't know if this will work but I will give it a shot I'm going to the adjustment brush I'm going to select the auto mask and I'm going to paint into her legs now what the auto mask does is it tries to, com uh, to confine the selection within the limits of the leg area or uh, in more technical terms it finds the edges of the area that you paint in and it will contain your paint effect within the area that is defined by these edges in this example the edges of her legs and as you can see they are getting quite bright but I'm doing this on purpose because I have the exposure slider cranked up when I'm working with the adjustment brush because I want to see which areas are affected by my paint brush. Once I'm done defining the area that I want to edit, I'm going to give the exposure a zero value to bring it down to zero. Oops. Okay. And I'm going now to play with the temperature in order to give, well, yikes, that sucks but you get the point I'm going to play with exposure uh, with a temperature slider I'm sorry to bring back a better color for her legs I don't know if I'm doing a great job here because I'm trying also to keep this tutorial as uh, quick as possible I might even go to the saturation slider and drop the saturation just a little bit I think it's a little better this is uh, the before and this is the after where there is a slight improvement but as I said this is not the point for this tutorial I'm just showing you some hacks in order to quickly finish a photo and once I'm completely done I can always go back to the basic panel and see if I can play with some primary uh, adjustments such as exposure as you can see here contrast etc what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up the exposure just a little bit and then I'm going again down to the effects panel and I'm going to increase the amount of the vignetting and maybe the midpoint. This will give a better contrast between the edges of the vignette and the center of the photo where my subject resides and it will almost look like the subject is backlit from behind. So there you have it, that was a dirty, lean, mean and quick tutorial in order to show you how to improve colors in every photo you have by using Lightroom, especially if you shoot in RAW format which I highly suggest you to do so you can get excellent results as you can see here and now the bonus trick I'm going to press G in order to go to grid mode and let's say I want to apply this set of corrections from this photo to similar photos from my set so I want to save time, right? what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the final photo right click on it, develop settings copy settings, check all the check marks and hit copy. Now I can press down my control button and select this photo, this photo and this photo. And why not since we are here this photo as well. I'm going to right click one of these photos that I just selected, go to develop settings again and I'm going of course to select paste settings and voila each and every photo will have the same look. Now, if you get a photo like this, which uh, for some reason not complying with the settings that you just pasted, you can always remember that it's a very good starting point, so you can go to the develop module again, you can see what has been screwed up, 
and you can fix it by saving time now this is not a very good example because I have done some very special processing for this photo this trick works best in photos that you have not edited at all so I'm going to select another set of photos to demonstrate my example I'm going to do a right click develop settings paste once more and for example this photo is quite dark as you can see but it's a very good starting point because I can fix it by simply going to the basic panel increasing the exposure just a little bit and maybe maybe going all the way down to the give me a second to the effects panel oops I closed it down sorry and I'm going simply to decrease the amount of uh, post crop vignetting and there you have it in let's say five seconds with two small corrections I got this photo to the point where I needed it to be by simply copying the settings from the first photo and pasting the settings to the rest of the set which was shot in the same location with the same lighting conditions or almost in the same lighting conditions Okay, that's it for today. If you didn't like this video, you definitely know what to do. Give it a thumbs down. But if you like it, please, please, please share this video. It's super important for us to get the word out and you can help by simply sharing to your social media channels this video. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below so I can answer and help each and every one of you. I constantly check the comment section so I can help everybody and also give it a thumbs up in YouTube this would also help a lot thanks again I'm Strato Ayani from craftiuspro.com join our mailing list so you can get all the lessons for free in your inbox so you don't miss anything and until next time happy editing Strato Ayani is signing, ah, signing out with a confusing line over here take care ciao